What's up? I am David Long. Welcome, Integral Community, to one of the first debates that we've had in the Integral Community. It's a very exciting event between Rasmus and Alyosha. Today we're going to be talking about emergentism versus idealism, and we're going to be looking at the different points on both sides. First of all, I want to apologize because I couldn't figure out how to go live and do this in the group or on YouTube. I'll try to do better next time, so I'm sorry about that to everyone. But I hope you enjoy this debate. First is going to be Rasmus, and he's going to go for about 10 minutes with his opening remarks, making a case for idealism and against emergentism, and then uh, after that is going to be Alyosha, and he's going to make his opening remarks. And then we'll have a second round for criticisms of each other's perspectives, and then the third round will be a more Socratic back and forth Q&A type of situation. So Rasmus, I am going to set a timer for 10 minutes, and you are up, my friend. Okay, 10 minutes and counting. In this debate, uh, my proposition is that emergentism is untenable relative to idealism. I start my presentation or round with defining the form of idealism defended in this debate. It is one according to which mind constitutes all of reality. Or alternatively, we might say that everything is embedded in the mental. I shall also clarify what I mean by mind. What I mean by mind or consciousness in this context, both of which I use interchangeably, is as follows. Mind is that whose excitations are subjective experiences, or simply that which experiences. This does not imply a subject-object distinction. Just like there's nothing to ripples but water, there is nothing to experience but mind. I shall now continue with substantiating some of the premises on which my arguments are based. I start with the premise that the form of idealism proposed is explanatorily sufficient by making sense of and explaining what might be the three central common observations of the reality in which we find ourselves. They are the, observ the observable strong correlations between brain activity and reported subjective experience, the observation that we seemingly share the same reality about which our understanding can converge and is consistent among observers, and the observation that the dynamics of the observable reality unfold independently of volition. What follows is an attempt to provide such an explanation. To explain the observations in question, what is proposed in this presentation is an, is an alternative to the emergentist ontology, according to which what is ontologically primary, is something physical such as brains, super strings, or the quantum vacuum. In this alternative mind-only ontology, consciousness or mind itself is the ontological primitive of reality, in terms of which everything in reality can be explained. Mind as the sole ontological primitive of reality is one ontologically homogeneous, identical numerical subject of experience, as opposed to various distinct subject of, subjects of experience. What explains our very seemingly numerically distinct centers of consciousness is the apparent fragmentation of mind into seemingly distinct minded entities through a process of dissociation. In normally integrated and unitary minds, there are cognitive associations between contents of consciousness or mental contents. For example, a thought may evoke a memory, which may evoke an emotion, which may evoke another thought, etc. All such mental contents are usually accessibly integrated. However, there's an empirically well-known phenomenon in psychiatry called dissociation, in which, in which some of the interrelated cognitive associations in a unitary mind cease to exist and thus become dissociated resulting in distinct, simultaneously conscious centers of awareness. This phenomenon is called dissociative identity disorder, DID, previously known as multiple personality disorder, which empirically bases the postulation that seemingly distinct centers of consciousness is a re result of dissociation of mind as the ontological primitive of reality, which I will call this writer Bernardo Castro does universal consciousness. According to this mind-only ontology, universal consciousness as the ontological primitive of reality dissociates into various alters in universal consciousness, outside of which is what I call transpersonal mind, or mind at large, to use a Huxleyan term. The transpersonal mentation of mind at large impinges on the dissociative boundary of alters, resulting in perception, corresponding to the transpersonal mental states from which the perceptions are impinged. What we call perception of the universe 
that is not perception of other sentient beings or biological organisms is thus phenomenal representation of transpersonal mental mentation in mind at large and perhaps of other sentient beings. Sorry, and perception of other sentient beings, the phenomenal representation of other dissociated alters within universal consciousness. As such, the capacity of various biological entities to perceive each other is a function of impingement of mental activity in mind at large. The dissociated mentation in any given alter will impinge on transpersonal mind, affecting its mental states, uh, which will in turn impinge on another alter sharing the same transpersonal mental environment, resulting in the perception of a biological body. In other words, some of the mental contents in transpersonal mind can get impinged by mental contents of an organism, which in turn impinges on the mental states of, an, of another organism, for whom those mental contents is the appearance of another organism in the form of its body. This explains our first observation, observation that there are strong correlations between brain activity and reported subjective experience. Brain activity and mental states correlate tightly with one another because the mental states of an alter causes in another alter, through impingement, the extrinsic appearance of the first alter's biological body, of which the brain is an integral part. As such, the body-brain system is the image or extrinsic appearance of a process of localization in universal consciousness. Brain activity, then, is simply part of a phenomenal representation of the mental activity or phenomenal experiences of another dissociated alter in universal consciousness, appearing as a certain representation through a process of impingement across the dissociated boundaries of the respective alters. And of course, brain activity then, as a phenomenal representation, necessarily correlates with the phenomenal experiences it is a representation of. Such brain activity is simply a part of what the phenomenal experiences of an alter look like from across respective dissociated boundaries. This also explains our observation that we seemingly share the same reality. What is being commonly perceived by organisms is not a mind external reality, it is rather a mental reality corresponding to the set of perceptions or appearance we call the inanimate universe as a whole. In other words, it is mental contents in transpersonal mind, or the same part of transpersonal mind corresponding to the phenomenal experiences or mental contents of various organisms in terms of which each of them apprehend and recognize a shared environment. From the prose ontology, we can also explain why the dynamics of the observable universe unfold independently of volition. The volition of any given dissociated alter in universal consciousness is part of the mental activity of the given alter, and as such, it is also dissociated from the rest of universal consciousness. And thus, it has limited control of how the universe unfolds. I continue with substantiating another premise. Or actually, no, I'm going to skip that part. Uh, uh, having substantiated uh, the most important premise, I proceed with providing uh, an argument for a form of idealism based on that premise. Premise one. If explanatorily sufficient, the more parsimonious ontology is more tenable relative to a less parsimonious ontology. Premise two. The proposed idealist ontology is more parsimonious relative to emergentism. Conclusion. Idealism is more tenable relative to emergentism. Having presented a more or less complex, ar complex argument for my proposition, I proceed with bringing some of this a little bit back from mentally masturbatory philosophical jargon land to some general points. In philosophy, there's a distinction between our qualitative experience and the things themselves, which is the distinction between the phenomena and the noumena. My claim is that yes, there is the noumena, but it is phenomenal in essence, or we might say mental in essence. It is nothing but mental processes. Additionally, my parsimony argument can be captured with a rhetorical question. It goes as follows. If we can make sense of things in terms of only one type of thing or ontological category, then why postulate a second? The essence of the parsimony, parsimony argument can also be captured with the following anal analogy. You don't say that what is beyond the horizon is a different planet, but just more Earth. I now proceed to make a very short negative case against emergentism. 
My contention is that insofar as we have no good reasons to believe that mind emerges from physical processes, we ought to reject that belief. I'm not here making the stronger claim that mind does not emerge from physical processes. My claim here is merely like the claim that, insofar as we do not have good reasons to believe that unicorns or fairies exist, we should reject these beliefs. Having completed my, uh, my first round, I now return the floor to uh, David or Alyosha. Nicely done, man, with even like 25 seconds to spare. All right, Alyosha, I am going to turn it over to you now and 10 minutes, go ahead. Yeah, I probably won't even need so much as 10 minutes. Um, so obviously, Rasmus has is a bit more prepared because I'm just suspecting he was probably reading from some kind of a text, if, the, if I'm not mistaken. How did you know? Yeah, I don't know. Just just a hunch, I guess, or maybe the way you spoke. But that's fine. I mean, it, it's great. Um, I kind of remember our talks when we had our text chats on the Facebook, if you remember. Yeah, and sure. and basically. I want to first point out that there probably is some points of agreement that I have with Erasmus and therefore uh, from Castro, right? Bernardo, or what's, what's, what's his second surname? Bernardo Castrum, Castrum. Because I remember he had a debate with uh, J, uh, J, J Tump, something, Tump, Tump J, Tump. something like that. Yeah. And, and I also agree with you that looking from an ontological perspective, it's true to say, and again, I agree, that everything is happening in the field of consciousness, it's purely speaking from, uh, from ontological. So we, we can say ontological primary is consciousness because everything is happening in the field of consciousness. Now, also, also remember that you said that you are not a panpsychist, which means you don't believe that rocks have consciousness is just that they appear in the field of consciousness which is different because if we compare with somebody like hegel or wilbur who believe that everything has a mind something like that so uh, there's like a ontological difference there and from our debates i also remember that you're not that you seem to be a determinist because i asked you about free will or you at least said i don't know i don't remember obviously you can when we're going to speak, you, we can kind of touch the subject as well, because I, I think free will has a lot to do with, with this, or maybe at least some of it has to do with, with the topic we're here. But here, basically, my proposition is this. I agree that from ontological perspective, like I said, everything's happening in the field of consciousness. But this is basically where I feel everything else stops. So you kind of said that there's a difference between for instance, you mentions, mentioned multiple personality disorder. But mu multiple personality disorder is um, it's still based... Obviously, it's hard for somebody who doesn't have multiple personality disorder to kind of say how that would look, right? But there's a field of consciousness and there's the different content that's coming to consciousness. And I still think that all this is still happening, how should I say? Even though it's true to say that material world appears in, let's say, mind, like uh, like you would say, or maybe Bernardo would say, I'm here like, let's say I'm like a local realist, but a systemic pragmatist, if you will. If you remember, I, I was talking about local TW, TWE and global TWE because you, Bernardo or you seem to make this distinction between, so everything is like a mind, everything happen, is happening in the, what I call global TWE and, you, and, and we are just local TWEs in the global TWE. Obviously, there are many things that we need to dwell upon such statement. But basically, my point is that I agree that everything is happening in TWE, but I still think that using emergentist, emergentist view is the best pragmatic view of reality that bring, brings us the closest to the truth as possible, as none of people who 
observe that mind going all the way from traditional religions like Buddhism, whatever mystics, no matter how much you observe the mind, besides the fact that you realize that you are consciousness and its content, there's nothing more to gain. Everything else we gain is more or less from observing quote unquote the material world, although I'm not I know that material world is just the word we use. And I also know and agree that material world is in consciousness. So in TWE, if you will. But I'm pragmatist in this sense that that's all we have. I don't see how such a statement like, I I don't see how TWE kind of resolves any fundamental questions about reality. Can this you is, say this real is, quick what TWE is? TWE is that which experiences. So this, okay. is, uh, this is Erasmus' uh, uh, the definition. I mean, this is the word you use, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of going from my chat we had with Erasmus. So again, this is basically my main point. I agree but I am a pragmatist in terms of all we have is quote unquote the material world, which ha- which is happening in TWE. But this is all we have. There's nothing, I don't see how we can see beyond, how how we can know anything about the world. I mean, there, there are either two options. We can even contemplate the internal world, which is observe our minds and, and so on, which is something, let's say, a Buddhist might do. Or we can do, we can kind of quote unquote, uh, research the external world, something a scientist might do, but in terms of understanding reality, only quote unquote external world that is happening in TWE is all we have. Basically, there's no such thing as going beyond the matrix. So, so for me, it's almost like TWE is a combination of internal and external world, and we don't know what's beyond TWE. So, I would even doubt. I mean, it's even questionable to say, does the global TWE exist? Because we don't know what's beyond local. We don't know what is beyond our consciousness. So for me, I am, let's say, a pragmatic materialist in this case. So, in, Or maybe I would say even idealistic emergentist in terms of that I agree, like I said, like a third time now, that I agree with uh, Erasmus, uh, Erasmus that everything's happening in TWE. But I don't see any further pragmatic value beyond the fact that it's happening in TWE. That's sort of my beginning statement. Okay, so that's that's round one in the bag. Round two, Rasmus is going to get the mic passed back to him, and he is going to give his first uh, counter statement. And we'll... What do you say we make these ones, these, these next two rounds, uh, six minutes? And then we'll, then we'll open it up to the third round where you guys can just uh, take turns asking each other Socratic questions. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. So I'm just going to respond to what El Josha just said? Yeah. And if you want to say more, like if there was something that you wanted to say before that you didn't get to say, basically... You have like another six minutes to say whatever you want, and then I'll pass it back to Alyosha, and then he can say whatever he wants, and then you guys can talk more. Unless you wanted more time. Do you want more time, Rasmus? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so I'll put six minutes on the clock, and go ahead. Okay, so I'll start off by addressing some of the things Alyosha said. Um, although I think I'm gonna, a lot of, a lot of my thoughts regarding that's probably gonna, uh, I'm probably gonna ask those and address some of the things said in the, uh, in the later stages. Um, but my kind of, um, concern with what Alyosha just said is I'm not, I'm not quite understanding if, he said he agrees that uh, everything is happening in in TWE, in that which experiences a definition for consciousness or mind. So I'm not sure if he, ontologically speaking, then 
does, uh, if he in fact does think that uh, mind does not emerge then from physical processes, or if he does think that, that is still a bit unclear to me. And uh, it's also a little bit unclear to me um, regarding the the pragmatic stuff. Um, like I'm, I'm not quite seeing if if he's suggesting that there's something untenable about idealism, even if he agrees in some sense that that is all happening in in mind or TWE, if there's something still untenable <clears throat> about idealism in virtue of, of his uh, pragmatic point. Yeah, so that was uh, me addressing that. And for whatever time I'm, I have left, I wanted to make a general point, point about uh, epistemology with regards to the, the substantiation of my ontology. Uh, I found it. How much time do I have left? You have three minutes, three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Was there a part you wanted to read from your previous thing you didn't get to? Yeah, kind of scrolling through here to find it. I mean, we can extend these things a little bit longer, you know, like, and so, I mean, we don't have to be super strict about the time. I just, you know, I'm trying to make sure that nobody runs off with it kind of a thing. So if you want to read your bit, you know, maybe now's a good time to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I found it. My, my epistemic point, uh, is the following. Uh, I also contend that uh, idealism is epistemically more reliable relative to emergentism. Uh, to many people, the notion of matter outside and independent of mind seems like a self-evident a priori certainty. I propose that this is, this is mistaken. It might be said that uh, the mere presence of the imagery and the general sense experience of the so-called external universe is sufficient in order to say that material reality is outside and independent of mind. My contention is that this is not so. Consider one of your nightly dreams, for example. You know that the experience and imagery of the world in your nightly dreams reside fully in your mind. Dreams are often qualitatively indistinguishable from the so-called real world. Therefore, the motivation to postulate material reality outside and independent of mind must go beyond the mere existence of this experience and this imagery. Therefore, matter alleged, alleged, allegedly uh, outside and independent of mind is a theoretical inference arising from the interpretation of sense perception within a framework, framework of conceptualization, not an observable empirical fact. As such, and herein lies the key point, mind and matter allegedly outside and independent of mind do not reside in the same level of explanatory abstraction. As matter outside and independent of mind is an inference and mind is a given. This breaks the epistemological asymmetry between them. And so mind is, a, is epistemically more reliable relative to matter outside and independent of mind. Yeah, so that was my thing about epistemology. And uh, yeah. You still have a whole other minute left, man, if you want to say anything else. Yeah, I guess I can, yeah, I can, I can uh, do my, run my argument regarding the, yeah, the epistemic argument. Uh, premise one, if explanatorily sufficient, the epistemologically more reliable ontology is more tenable relative to an epistemologically less reliable ontology. Premise two, the proposed idealist ontology is epistemologically more reliable relative to emergentism. Conclusion, idealism is more tenable relative to emergentism. Yeah, so that was the epistemic argument. Uh, but as Alyosha said, he does seem to sort of agree with the, with the ontology, if I... I got that right. Uh, I could be I could be wrong, and maybe Alyosha, you want to correct me on this, but I think it's probably more accurate to say that you're talking about epistemology, like you're saying that like 
Yeah. Um, subjectivity is epistemically primary, not necessarily ontologically primary. Right. Right. So it's yeah. like your your subjective experience is primary in terms of like what we can say that we know more than you're saying that it's primary in terms of like what is right Alyosha you're muted still by the way um yeah I mean my my kind of argument here is that I mean I'm gonna I mean are, are we going to the third round already or yeah it's uh it's your third it's your no 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 no. it's your part of the second round oh but, okay i'm ready it's my already my turn um but yeah you should clear this up so go ahead six minutes yeah i might not even need six minutes so my argument so i want to kind of point out that materialism per se is just the way we experience things right so materialism is like a pragmatic use of how TWE, how we experience the world ontologically speaking. So everything's happening in consciousness, like Erasmus says, and saying something a material, let's say, you know, a chair is a material thing, is just a pragmatic way. Obviously, we don't know what chair is ultimately made of. Obviously, we know it's atoms, but we don't know what atoms are made, made of and how quantum physics and how all this works. So when I say material, I'm just saying we use the word material because this is the way we pragmatically, for whatever reason, decided to uh, name the world which we see and hear and smell, the objective world, right? And this is what I mean by pragmatic. Although I am in terms of what is the ultimate reality, I'm unclear, either, either being materialistic or idealistic, um, or probably something beyond that. I mean, again, this is just the duality we as humans created, right? Um, what's beyond that is probably, I mean, this is the problem with the matrix, right? Right. So if this is the matrix, and let's say somebody steps out of the matrix, what's the next matrix, right? Nobody knows. Um, I think that dream analogy that uh, Rasmus made, again, I'm, I'm, I think I, it should be better that when we start talking, we can kind of go back and forward. So I'm not going to even go way too far. I would rather see if we just uh, continue to the third round because I feel it's better for communication. So this is sort of enough for now. So Alyosha, you're saying that you're ultimately an agnostic and that in terms of what the ultimate truth of reality is, like we could be in a simu simu simulation for all you know, but like science is more pragmatic about how reality works yeah, yeah. within it, whatever this exactly. is. Exactly. And okay. I and I think, I think that Rasmus then kind of needs to point out if he's arguing, I mean, again, I'm not sure exactly how he's arguing that his version of idealism is better in terms of understanding reality. So what exactly he's basically, I know he said that that kind of solves the problem of consciousness. And then I, I kind of accused him that it's not necessarily solving as much as it is just changing the problem. Because you can either have a hard problem of consciousness, which means how does, um, from material, how does consciousness emerge? Or you have the other way around, how does material emerge in consciousness? So e either way, you have a dualistic problem that none of us uh, limited beings can really kind of step out. So I don't see how either materialism or idealism takes us out of the matrix and sees what's on the other side. It's just more pragmatic in terms of relative reality, the one we experience, to have an emergentist point of view. This is sort of, I hope. So I would you that. say that emergentism isn't an absolute truth claim, it's a relative objective truth claim, while idealism is an absolute truth claim. It's a claim about what's <laughs> ultimately true about the about the nature of reality. Well, this again, this is something that Erasmus would probably need to elaborate more because it seems like he's trying to make some absolute claims when he's saying that we are, um, so let's say we are local TWE and there's global mind because the problem is that none of us seem to remember. Now, I'm not saying this is not necessary. I mean, it could be true, right? I just think that such a statement can open a lot of new age things. So he can say there's their souls and spirits and so on. 
because none of us remembers how it was before we were alive and it's questionable how it's going to be after we die right um, but we do know that destroying certain material parts will change that TWE so there's a difference if I if I kill Erasmus then his TWE will change from local to global based on his um, uh, theory again I'm I'm giving him time to elaborate this is just my speculation, but this, this is where I see the problem. So I'm like a very careful emergentist, emergent pragmatist, if you will, but I don't want to make any speculation what is the absolute nature of reality, either being materialistic or idealistic. I'm just kind of pragmatic materialist, accepting the fact that everything's happening in TWE, but I don't feel like how TWE can really explain all that much. That's sort of my problem. That's why I have questions for Rasmus because I want to see why he thinks that uh, his ide ideology is better in terms of explaining reality. It is obvious in terms of ontological <laughs> primitive and how we, experiences, how we experience ourselves as people, right? So we are consciousness and its content, but I don't see how does this help us understand ultimate reality because I don't think it does nor does it help us understand any other reality. I mean, no amount of searching your mind is going to give us a computer. No amount of searching our mind is going gonna, is gonna to tell us every, anything about our, our universe. Um, and there probably wouldn't be any kind of technological or any kind of innovation if we just search for our mind. So this is sort of... I don't see exactly what the pragmatics of his point of view are, except some vague speculation of that there might be some kind of a global uh, mind or that everything is happening overnight. Again, uh, I think it's better to go back and forward and go from point to point. I don't want to go too far. Okay, well, that's your six minutes anyway. So round two is up. Rasmus, I hope you don't mind me asking him some probing questions to get him to explain his position more. It seemed like he was just trying to give up his time. Go ahead. No, I mean, I, I, hope I did that. So I hope you don't mind me butting in a little bit there to get some more information out of it. Yeah, not at all. No. Okay, good. Um, okay, so round three is Socratic questioning. And you guys are doing great, by the way, if, if you don't mind a, a bit of encouragement from the outside. I appreciate the, um, the skillfulness and the intellectual honesty with which you guys are doing this debate. Much respect. Likewise, so, we all. Round three, um, Rasmus, you started the last couple rounds. I'm going to switch it over to Alyosha and give him the first question, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Sure. Go right ahead, Alyosha. Okay, so I guess, Mike, uh, I'm, I'm just going to probably ask some logical questions here. So obviously, I just want to make sure first we kind of understand each other. Um, and I think we probably do and like i said i agree with the ontological primitive that everything is in consciousness right but i don't just you you mentioned that this epistemology kind of solves a lot of problems like even arguing that it solves the hard problem of consciousness but i don't see what exactly this did this um epi, uh, looking at it from such a ontological slash epistemological perspective what exactly this did it bring to the table? Now, what, what, what more do we know based on what you're saying compared to more traditional scientific view? Um, well, I think that's uh, a separate question from the question of whether it's, whether it's true, right? Whether it's, uh, wh wh whether, what it brings to the table seems to me like a, like some sort of a meta discussion rather than actually uh, the actual ontological discussion. Uh, so I don't see how that is, is relevant to that point. Well, I mean, but we kind of agree with ontological. So we both agree that from subjective experience of each individual being, everybody is experience, experiencing, ex experiencing themselves as con consciousness and its content, right? So we can... So it's almost objectively true to say that everything's happening. So everything is a content of consciousness. Therefore, everything is happening in consciousness. 
So we agree on that, but I don't see what more can you derive from this except the the very fact that what I said that is true. But how does, for instance, this solve the hard problem of consciousness? Because I, I remember you once mentioned that. Um, well, it solves the hard problem in that, according to idealism, uh, mind or consciousness is not a product of, of material processes in brains. So it circumvents the question by denying the question in the first place, by denying its validity. Uh, the question basically asks how, but it assumes uh, a that. It assumes that it does it, which is, of course, what is being denied. So that question disappears in an idealist framework. Of course, as you say, maybe new questions arises, but the question disappears nonetheless. Right. Okay, sure. But then the question is, but aren't you then kind of changing the whole epistemology? And even if you are, for instance, if you if you poke a brain or whatever, right? So obviously there's a brain damage and that brain damage infects one's mental capabilities, but also one's consciousness, right? So how do you know? So for instance, if somebody shuts down your body or uh, let's say kills you for a lack of a better example, yeah. what would happen to TW in this case? Alyosha, you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here real quick because that's your second question. Like, I don't mind follow-up questions, you know, and it'd be good to go down these rabbit holes, but we also need to take turns. So uh, I'm going to give Rasmus some, a, a follow-up question when it's his turn. Is that okay? Whatever, sure, yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay, so it's got to be a follow-up question to his question or just anything I want? No, I mean like when it's your turn, if you want to dig in deeper, we'll do that as well. I just don't want, I just don't want, it to, I just don't want it to get to be where any one person is just questioning the other person the whole time. We'll go back and forth. Okay. Uh, so, I, so I can ask any question I want? Or? You can ask any question you want, or you can answer his question and then ans and then ask your question. However, you want to do it. Um, I don't. Know. I don't think I have anything as of yet. I think I'm going to leave it for the third round, actually. Well, we're in the third round. Oh, uh -huh. we're, which is like the Socratic questionings round, right? So if you you guys are going to discuss back and forth now, so that's that's fine. You like you can keep doing that. I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure you know, that uh, it wasn't just Alyosha questioning you or you questioning Alyosha. We can go down some rabbit holes, you know what I mean? Like where, where you can get some back and forth. But I, I want us to be able to, to take turns and it seems like um, he was maybe asking a different question at that point. Okay. Um, and I don't want to get in the way of the discussion. So, I mean, if you, as long as you guys are feeling comfortable, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like I want to facilitate but also, anyways, go ahead. Okay, but yeah, if, if this is like the back and forth round, if that was the third round, yeah. I'm fine with the Alyosha keep, uh, to keep asking me questions. Okay. Okay, so yeah. I can just- I'll just let um, it be open chat then. You guys can go okay. ahead and discuss and I won't butt in. So I'm, I'm just gonna restate a question, right? So you're basically saying that everything is in TW, therefore kind of circumventing the question, right? Mm -hmm. But then, obviously, if that's the case, you need... To, so, the, the, obviously, the, it seems to be that, like, there's a difference between being alive and being dead, and there, right? So, there, there's a difference between d dreaming and waking up in the quote-unquote real world. That's one thing, right? But it's completely okay. another, it seems, that if you if you go from a living state to dying. So, my question is, what happens to TWE if you do quote unquote physical damage to the brain, right? Because you seem to kind of seem to answer the question that I, at least you're hinting at. So basically my question is subjectively speaking, what happens to you if you die? What happens to TW in this case? 
<clears throat> yeah, I anticipated this question, so I actually wrote a, uh, right. a response to this, or prepared a response to this, so I'm just going to read it. Uh, I think uh, the question implicitly assumes some separately existing entity that continues to exist over time and is capable of ceasing to exist at a, or continuing to, to exist at a specific moment or event, such as the one we call death. So to ask whether consciousness of a dissociated alter or what you call a local TWE uh, continues to exist after death implicitly assumes a continuance over time. Uh, and for this, so in other words, it assumes the view of identity called closed individualism in philosophy of personal identity. But the thing is, I don't think there's a, uh, a consciousness uh, belonging to an altar that continues to exist over time. Experiences arise and pass away, as they say in Buddhism. And uh, after death, there will not be experiences arising again, in which its contents uh, make up a process of identification with the person we, gener we generically ascribe the status allied to. Um, so, that is at least the sort of current way I view things. Um, there's also a claim the idealists make, such as Bernardo, that death is the end of the end of the dissociation, and that one reintegrates with the with the broader mind of universal consciousness. Uh, but I'm actually agnostic with respect to that claim. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how to make sense of that. Uh, as of yet, I'm I lean more more towards the perspective of just I just uh, read to you. So basically, you're kind of saying that you don't know, but Bernardo kind of feels like it's going. So it kind of it the personality or consciousness dissociates to the global mind. So from from local, it becomes global once you die. This is something. So this is something I guess Bernardo would argue, and you're kind of agnostic, if I understand correctly. Yes, exactly. But I think I think. Uh... I lean more towards the perspective that uh, the question of whether one continues or, or ceases to exist or one's consciousness continues or ceases to exist after death, I lean more towards uh, that being a false question in that it assumes uh, an identity carrier or a, a separately existing entity whose consciousness continues over time. And I'm, uh, and I'm uh, very skeptical of that sort of... Uh, you but, but then um, yeah okay but this is sort of a, again kind of speculating about absolute nature of reality so an, another question then i would have is everything is happening in twe right why is they why is there even a common reality right why don't we now obviously it might not be right maybe i'm the only person that really has consciousness and everybody in the world is just a uh, illusion maybe you're maybe even you yourself are actually just dead inside and there's no way obviously for me to prove that wrong and obviously the same goes for you right but if TW... i might be dead inside you guys <laughs> yeah yeah but but yeah, but if if TWE exists, why is there even a common reality? So how, why would they, the question is, why would there even be common reality in the first place, right? I just don't see, I mean, the reason we use emergentist perspective is basically because we live in a common reality and we can use that perspective as a pragmatic way to understand ever deepening understanding of materialism. Again, all in quotation marks with understanding that materialism is happening in TWE. But why is there even a common TWE? I mean, why is there a common field of TWE that we all share, right? Why why aren't you in your own kind of TWE? And, and, and then obviously it comes to the broader question, why does this global mind even exist? So I think this is just, for me, a global mind is just, a, you know, again, possible speculation but none of us really know. I mean, if we, I mean, if we die and whether we are aware or not, and this is why I go back to saying I'm a pragmatist because uh, for me, 
the important thing is almost just what is pragmatic in terms of what gets us further to uh, understanding things within the material and subjective world. But any, anything beyond that for me is almost like just a speculation that could be or not be true. But I, again, I don't see any value going any further than that, right? So even if Bernardo, let's give him a benefit of a doubt, let's say he's even right, I still don't see, I mean, except the fact it's an interesting perspective, I don't see any useful value in the perspective, right? And again, I just, I don't see why if if you damage the brain, why, why is there even a constant physical world in TWE, right? Again, why doesn't everybody have their own kind of physical world? Now, obviously, you can say it's all happening in one global mind. But um, for me, then, it's kind of useless to even talk about it in such terms, right? Because emergentism seems more useful. And the idealism that Bernardo proposes um, is just an interesting thought experiment, but I don't see how, I mean, e even true in a way, obviously, but beyond local PWE, I think everything beyond that, I feel is just a speculation and I don't see how, and you don't know what's, what would global TWE be. I'm sure Bernardo probably doesn't have an answer for that either. He would probably just say, um, that you know is just one interpretation but i don't think anybody either me david or bernardo or you or anybody can speculate what is beyond uh one's death um, or what happens after that is there like a global mind or whatever it is um so even if i agree that everything is twe i just don't see where can how further can we go except accepting that fact and then make maybe making some baseless speculations what's beyond dying or if, if, if there is a global mind or whatever. But beyond that, I don't see any pragmatic reason. I mean, what, what can you even, what, why, what is there more to talk about? Why do you feel like this view is maybe profound or whatever the case may be? Because it's an interesting view, but I don't see any pragmatic kind of, um, I don't see any pragmatic usefulness to it except being some interesting epistemological epistemological standpoint that i feel is completely useless at I'll the end of the day do you mind if i could i try to summarize what you just said very briefly like it sounds like you're saying on like besides the the pr pragmatic point like if you want to if he's saying that that's uh, kind of irrelevant to the question of the truth of it. It also seems like you're saying, okay, on one sense, you're making this claim about the about idealism, like like you know that it's true. So how do you know in terms of the truth claim? And then in terms of the pragmatic aspect, like how does it like how does it work within our knowledge? Like it's not just a matter of of pragmatism, like. Like what, what good things does it bring to the table, but like how does it help us know reality better? That seems to be your deeper question, right? So how do you know and how does it help us know reality better? Yeah? Yeah, so that would be, yeah, I would want to kind of ask Rasmus um, how, I mean, I, I still don't see, yeah, how does this help us? I kind of want uh, to see reality better, like David said. That would be my question. I don't know. I haven't thought about that much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly just here, primarily here to just defend the, the, on, the ontology of it, uh, that it's true. Uh, wh how would, how you, would it potentially help us? I, I, haven't, I haven't thought much about that. As of okay. yet, I have an interesting answer there. Right, but, but the problem is you, I mean, you're basically just saying if we, dumb it down everything's happening in TWE but yet cannot even make the most basic and probably important leap between what the difference between the local and global right so you're basically just saying then everything is happening in TWE but I don't really know what happens after that is there like a global mind I don't know but then if that's the case I actually 
like I said, I agree with the fact that everything is happening in consciousness, that which experiences, but I just don't, but okay. And, but this is basically the ending part. Okay. Obviously you're saying it doesn't really help us with anything. It just kind of pointing out the obvious. This is kind of my. So how do you get from the personal to the global is the question. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's like, um, yeah, there's a question, but I don't, he probably, I mean, he, I already asked that question beforehand and he basically said he's agnostic and he doesn't know, right? Because how this disassociation part, how do you know when you die that this personal, um, the local TW becomes um, global, the glo- part of the global mind? Right. How, 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 Res- how does one know that? Um, yeah, so the, regarding, uh, what happens to one's consciousness after death, like, again, I'm not exactly sure how to view that because to say that something happens to one's consciousness, uh, after death seems to me to, to implicitly assume, uh, some, some separately existing entity or separate self. Sam Harris says, a rider on the boat of consciousness that continues from one moment to the next and over time. So I'm, so I'm not exactly sure how to make sense of, of, of the question of what happens to one's consciousness after death. Well, what about the question, how do you go, how do you know that there is this fractioning off? How, like, how do you go from the local, like I have consciousness to then also this claim that the universe is consciousness or that my, my consciousness is happening in this larger consciousness. Like, how do you know that? Yeah, I know that, uh, or I, I, I don't know that, but I, I infer that, uh, based on, for example, that we seemingly share the same reality. Uh, an emergentist or a physicalist might say that what we should infer then is a, is a material reality outside and independent of mind. And my claim is that that step is illegitimate. It is more parsimonious to infer something beyond our minds, yes. Not, like I said earlier, yes, there is the noumena. There is the things themselves outside of our personal minds. But that thing is, is, is not mind external. It's not of a fundamentally different ontological nature. It is rather of the same ontological nature uh, as, as our own consciousness. It is yet, it is yet more consciousness that is outside of our personal, personal minds. So it is, it is more parsimonious to infer that. That's, that's the reason. But you don't know what's happened, what happens to this consciousness when you die. I don't know what happens to uh, what we call our consciousnesses. But what, what do you make, so what is, uh, I mean, is it, how do you even view the difference between our consciousness? So consciousness, so for me, consciousness in this case is everything that can, everything that can observe everything except itself, right? So it's kind of a more Buddhist interpretation. Now, obviously we can go with that which experiences, but I mean, for me, it's almost the same thing. But is there a difference between our local consciousness versus the global mind or global consciousness that you're saying Bernardo was pointing at because I mean the why why does even local consciousness exist why why isn't there just one big global mind or whatever um I don't know I just I just don't I just don't see any any Alyosha what do you yeah. make of his what do you make of his argument that um that postulating an exterior reality is um, adding extra things and that's and that's that's his argument what do you think about that well if i i mean if i understand correctly he's not saying that um he he's basically saying that everything is happening in the field of consciousness he's not saying that um well i asked him how he knows how he gets from this idea that he exists to the idea that the universe is consciousness and he's saying that 
be, that it's because you have to postulate less things. We know, we know mind exists, we know consciousness exists, and therefore, like that's, so it's easier to say, well, then all that exists is mind, rather than think that there would be some exterior reality. It's more, it says it's more parsimonious to postulate less things. What do you think about that? Um, well, I assume one can, uh, Erasmus can answer that. No, that's a question to you. That's his point. What do you think about his point? Oh, okay. Um, well, maybe I don't quite understand what, or maybe I have a different kind of um, interpretation. But if I understand him correctly, he's basically, um, he, he's not saying that, he's basically just arguing that everything is happening in the field of consciousness, right? Well, I asked him, how do you know that there is this this bigger mind at large that we're a part of. And he said that the reason that he knows is because it's more parsimonious to postulate less things. We know mind exists because that's all we can really know. So there, so like, so he gets from that to this idea of uh, mind at large and that we're a part of that rather than postulate an exterior reality. He says it's more parsimonious and that's how he knows. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, the problem is it's hard to, it's hard to, I mean, here I feel like, and this is something I said before, it seems like he's changing the whole epistemological approach, right? And I don't see how I could, I mean, I agree. It's, I don't see how one could, counter argue this point that he's making besides going back to the fact that I, I can change my epistemology by simply saying well let's go back to the emergentist view and say if you damage this and that uh, consciousness uh, destroys but I don't see how I could counter argue that point so when we were talking on the Facebook I kind of agree that he is right in this case so you um, don't think that it could make sense to postulate a like materialistic version of emergentism as a, as having more explanatory power than this idea that consciousness is all that it's all happening in consciousness but this is going back to my pragmatic point of view so basically i like i said before so now this is going back to my idea of pragmatism right i just feel like it's true to say everything's happening in dwe but in terms of how we can, I mean, the, the materialism or emergentism has a better explanatory power in terms of understanding our relative reality. Well, and expanding the emergence of, in, of consciousness, right? So it's like, it, we, it's, can, it's, we can say we all experience consciousness, but then we have to then understand what consciousness is and what it really is, right? That's what's kind of in question here, like, what is consciousness and how does it get here right so how and how do we know and is there a a better case to be made on either side for for who has more explanatory power for their world being? well my my argument here is simple his his point of view could be more true but i don't understand how he can explain it now based on what i heard him say he's basically saying that it doesn't matter it's he was just trying to say ontologically speaking everything's happening in consciousness and he doesn't care about pragmatism or is emergentism a more useful um, way to try to explain all this stuff. But as I understood him, he doesn't necessarily care about that part. He's just saying everything is happening in TWE. He doesn't know about the global. He just thinks about the lo local. But he doesn't care about the explanatory power and all the other things. Um, that go with it because again this is about the battle of epistemology because I can, I all I can do in this case is just say okay let's switch back to emergentism and say and here's the reason why emergentism is better because you know we can observe material reality and speculate but then he could just say well but yeah sure but I don't care about that he's because saying, that's not my point he's saying that he has the better explanatory power because um, Occam's razor he's postulating less things so I, I mean, he, not, he, he, he didn't, he didn't, I mean, he didn't necessarily say he had better explanatory power. He's just saying that ontological primitive is 
TWE. But he beyond that, he it's just some vague speculation between the difference between local and global, and that's pretty much all we have. I don't I don't see how we could even go any further than that. And this is the problem that I have because besides that point, I don't see what else can can one bring to the table. So this is why I'm saying I agree with him. But then this is the end because that's all we have. Okay, I you agree, wanna but jump now in we need to go back to emergentism. Uh, like I'm, I'm not actually sure I'm understanding his objection uh, regarding. No, I'm not. I'm not objecting. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with, uh, you, with you in this case. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that you don't seem to be in. I mean, the problem is, this is the problem of epistemology, right? I mean, of pragmatism. You're, you're basically arguing that you don't necessarily care about how we should explain our experience. You're just arguing that everything is happening in TWE. No, right? This is all you're arguing. I don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just not my primary concern. Uh, in general, at the moment, it's not in, neither in this uh, conversation. Because what, what is your primary concern, Rasmus? My primary concern is, uh, is uh, showing uh, that idealism, ontologically speaking, is is uh, is more tenable relative to emergentism. Basically. You mean you mean in this debate? Yeah, in right. this debate. Right. Okay. No, I assume in, in so general. So when he says when he says tenable, he means he means it's got the better explanatory power. That was kind of what he said That's in his not, opening not statement. Not right? No, 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 no. He no? didn't. No, I don't think. I don't think so. Well, what do you mean by tenable, Rasmus? Yeah, it's like. Given a choice between emergentism and idealism, we have better reasons to believe uh, idealism is true, ontologically speaking. Because and this you, is where you stop, right? This is the end. You're not going any further than that. You're not saying this. I mean, because I don't see, even though it seems like you're right, when it comes to us trying to understand reality, all we have is what's happening in DWE. So observing our material world is all we have in terms of pragmatic understanding of uh, TWE, but you're not, you don't care about that pragmatic understanding. You're all, all you care about is ontological ontology. Just, you want to just point out that everything is happening in TWE and this is where your kind of concern stops. Is this, am I understanding correctly, Rasmus? Like, again, it's not that I don't care, but it's not my primary concern. And I view them as separate matters, separate questions. And uh, we, I think we can have these two uh, conversations kind of separately. It's, it, of course, they kind of relate a little bit, I suppose, but uh, there's, there's still separate questions. Yeah, and but aren't you kind of preaching to the choir in this case? Because I we, we, I mean, we, I mean, we. I assume we probably, because, I, and this is why I would when when we stop debating on Facebook, at the end, I basically agreed with your point that you are right that everything is happening T W E, and this is, I think, this was one of the my end end ending statements in in Facebook, uh, chat we had like a few months ago, that I agree. I just don't see any usefulness beyond the fact that what you're saying seems to be right from our subjective experience. Um, but it, but this is the problem that, that I was saying before. Um, with, with what he's concerned, there's no point of me switching back to the emergentist point of view because it's not something he concerns with. Right, no. because he's changing the whole epistemology, so there's no point of me. So, Alyosha, yeah. do you not think that you can that you can make a case that emergentism is a more reasonable position for what consciousness is? That it's an emergent property of matter and not the and not the source. Do you not feel like you can make an uh, an argument for that? No, no, no. I can because not the way base he's framing. It's impossible to make that argument because Why is because that? they. Because then he will just say this happens. So even if I go back to emergentism, he will just say, "Well, emergentism happens is happening in consciousness." No, no that, that's not really. That's not really. Oh, in in God. that which experiences in this case. So yeah, when when, when you look at 
Oh, for instance, if I if I damage the brain, right, you would probably say that damaging the brain is happening in mind, right? Yeah, okay. I, I want to clarify that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, cool. my, my argument is not merely that, uh, that because we experience it uh, in our minds, that's the reason why it's all happening in our minds, right? My, my view regarding how, how changes in the brain affects mental states is a little bit more nuanced than that. It's it's uh, it's uh, changes in brains affects minds through a process of impingement across respective dissociated boundaries between minds, uh, between dissociated alters in universal consciousness. Uh, changes in brains as a phenomenal representation uh, changes changes the states of mind at large through impingement. Uh, which will in turn change the states of the other dissociated alter uh, through impingement, affecting but, its mental. But Rasmus, aren't you just claiming that? Like, how do you know that that's what's happening? Like, how is that not just within like a uh, like assertion? Like, I, I guess if I was Alyosha, I would be like, you know, in terms of this pragmatism, like, where's the like we don't like emergentists just don't, don't just be like well we like to think it's like this we then do science and try to correlate those things and figure out what's going on like where's the evidence that supports this assertion yeah it's an explanatory model can you say more about that yeah um so the claim of emergentism uh, is that mind emerges from material processes. Uh, but that presupposes some, some something else but mind from which mind emerges. Uh, that is a step that I say is, is inaccurate. And my claim is that if we can make sense of our experience and our observations of reality, terms of only mind, then uh, we don't need to postulate that other thing, uh, that, that thing which is not mind from which mind emerges. So, well, I will agree with you that you're postulating less things, but mm -hmm. it seems to me that the thing that you're postulating isn't founded or supported. And even though emergentism postulates more things, its positions are better founded and there's more evidence to support them in terms of like this claim of what is consciousness and how do we know? Do you know what I mean by that? Could you repeat that last part? Yeah, in terms of what is consciousness and how do we know? Like, it seems to me that yes, you're not, you're not, necess you're not necessarily um, postulating as many things, but the thing that you're postulating doesn't have evidence or science to back it up. It's just pure assertion. While emergentism, even though it includes more steps, those steps are more rigorously um, founded and explored and like falsified and peer reviewed and tested. So like the view in itself is more well founded because all of the premises are solid, whereas you, what, what you're saying sounds like pure assertion. What is it that you're saying is tested? The, um, like the emergence of the functions of consciousness, in, like, like the history of, like, you know, in the, in the very similar, I think, to um, like Christians and, and creationism versus uh, evolution, like the way that evolution is mapped yeah, there's missing links in terms of, you know, uh, explanatory power. We don't know where all the fossils are. We don't, ha we, ha we don't have the whole full thing mapped out, but we have enough to know, okay, evolution is a fact. Just like, it seems like even though there's gaps in our knowledge about the emergence of consciousness, like we have plenty of data about this. We, we, can, we have all of these beings that exist at all levels and we, and we have ideas about how all of this has emerged. And even, even you would say 
that, that certain beings that exist in reality are conscious and other ones are not. So you have to explain why certain ones are and why certain ones aren't. And so all that's gonna, all that's gonna have to have explanatory power and falsification. And you're gonna have to justify that position with, with science, maybe not necessarily pure, you know, what we would call like materialist reductionist science, but with a scientific method, right? Like, like is your view falsifiable? Can you, can you show all the steps that lead to your conclusion and, and support those steps? Not just do you have less steps, right? Yeah, it, it's not really a scientific theory, so it's not falsifiable in the, necessarily in the scientific sense, but it's falsifiable in terms of its internal logic in terms of its explanatory power, in terms of uh, its steps, as you say, it's uh, what it, in terms of how, how many things in, uh, or ontological entities it postulates. Um, but but we're, we're, moreover, we're, what you said generally, I'm not quite understanding. It, it seems like you're saying that based off of the data, the given data that, that you have in mind, uh, that it somehow supports an emergentist uh, conclusion, but I don't, I don't really see how that follows. Well, I'm saying that either way, that you have to make a case that justifies your conclusion. So even, whether, whether there's 10 steps, in the justification of the conclusion or two steps in the justification of the conclusion what matters more is if you can like demonstrate the truth of those steps rather like that matters more than how many steps there are would you agree with that um i don't really know actually I'm not sure how to think about that. Okay, fair enough. Do you want to jump in here, Alyosha? Um, yeah, I, I think that we have kind of, me and you, David, kind of have a different understandings of what Rasmus is saying, maybe. Um, and like I said, within, when I was having his fa the Facebook chat, I didn't, I couldn't counter-argue what he was saying. And going back to the original point, I, like I said, he is right in terms of ontological primitive. I just don't see, um, because you're tr now you're trying to do exactly what I originally wanted to do, shift the epistemology back to emergentism. But well, I'm saying that either way, you're making a case about what the truth of reality is. And so if you're going to say, okay, well, this is a more reasonable or tenable view there are logical steps that get you from something like I think, therefore I am. Like I know well, more I, pragmatic steps. I know I exist. Yeah, but then, but I guess this is where we're, where maybe the confusion is happening because like you're talking about pragmatism and he's talking about explanatory power. And when you're talking about pragmatism, it's like you're getting lost in the usefulness and the goodness of it. And he is more talking about the logical coherence of the, of the position. Right. So it's like, uh, yeah, I would argue that the, the, what you're saying are two the same things. There, yeah. Well, there's overlap. Right. So, but I'm saying you're using different language. So maybe you're, you're missing each other. Like don't argue it in necessarily in terms of like how practical it is to be able to understand reality argue in it of, in terms of like how you know that reality is this way based on the tests that you can do to come to this conclusion yeah but all those tests are happening in twe yeah but right? rasmus is he, he is concerned with truth and he's not just a person like rasmus are you gonna say that like um what's your relationship with science like i mean would you be convinced by good reasons and evidence to think that emergentism is true if, if, if such a case could be made? I hope so, but uh, I uh, don't have, uh, perhaps don't have as much access to my subconscious as I would wish, I don't know, but I, I certainly hope so. 
Well, respect. Yeah. I mean, like this, honestly, Alyosha, this is, seems like a very good faith debate where people are all trying to figure out what's actually true. So it seems like if you think that you can make an actual practical case for this worldview, that Rasmus is willing to entertain that. And if you can knock down his ideas about uh, the justifications for his worldview, it seems like he would be open to that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem is that based on how I understand his theory and where is he coming from, I don't see how is that possible since he's changing sort of the epistemology because if I understand correctly, as I said before, his main point is that uh, we are all in, I mean, everything's happening in TWE and therefore any kind of emergentism inquiry is beside the point. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not relevant because the way I understand er, the, his ontological point is just everything is happening in TWE. And it's beyond the, whether how, how brains are happening, if you damage the brain, what you do in material world is important in terms of pragmatism, but relevant to the point that everything is happening in TWE. This is my understanding. That's why I don't want to shift to emergentism because that's not what he seems to be interesting. The, the, this is why I don't, well, that is why I agree with you that obviously emergentism has a lot more explanatory power, power because we'll say why well obviously it's a bit more complex than no but but this is my point it, it, there's no point in me saying why because he can always say yeah but emergentism is happening in TWE this is this is this is why I don't see the point because I assume Erasmus would agree um I mean, yeah, but I assume still Rasmus be... still agrees with pragmatic with pragmaticism of science. He's not necessarily denying scientific view and observing the objective reality. He's just pointing out that everything, all this reality, is happening in TWE. But I, like, like I said, I still have yet seen him explain in terms of because again, it, maybe we should kind of split the difference. What, what is are we? thinking about the absolute reality or are we talking about the relative reality? Um, I just, I, I think he understands emergentist point of view. I, I think he's, he's just talking about ontological primitive and that's all he cares. Although he, I seem, I don't seem, he doesn't seem like he's denying materialism in any way. He's just basically saying that all this thing is happening in TW. So again, I'm, I'm going to give Erasmus a chance to because I'm now defending Rasmus, so Rasmus, please explain. And do you agree with my interpretation of what you're saying, or do you think I'm wrong? Or um, yeah, I, I guess basically, yeah. You guess that you agree, or you think he's wrong? I, I think he uh, represents my my view accurately enough. Well. Okay, well, how do you get here? I guess here's my question, if you don't mind me jumping in as the moderator to try to keep this thing going. Um, how do you go from knowing that you exist, having an experience of consciousness, to then this bigger worldview? There are other steps, and you have to use logic, right? And is it just that it's more parsimonious? Is that the only reason why? Uh, so I infer it uh, to make sense of certain observations. Okay. And why, why I infer uh, tr uh, transpersonal mind uh, outside of our personal consciousnesses, outside of our personal minds, is because of uh, epistemological reliability and primarily parsimony. But, but uh, epistemic reliability as well. Can you say more about the epistemic reliability? Yeah, so I, I can say that it's epistemologically more reliable to explain things in terms of what we know rather than in terms of uh, a theoretical inference that we don't know with equal amount of epistemological confidence. So, and you're saying because you know your consciousness that 
then that becomes the more reliable way of knowing. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's more reliable to infer consciousness because we know consciousness exists. It's more reliable to infer that then uh, than it is to infer uh, a reality outside and independent of consciousness. Yeah, but aren't you still assuming some things about what consciousness is? Isn't that like, I mean, and I mean, are you really postulating other things when we do seem to exist in a shared reality with others? I'm not like, sure. I mean, well, I mean, like we, rea like we're having this discussion. There are other people. You think that they're also conscious too, right? So to come to this idea that we're all, I guess, like ar archetyped in the mind of God or something like this, right? Like dream characters in this in this like bigger consciousness. Yeah, like I wouldn't. I would not. I would not use the G word. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, it, I, I could understand why you would want to uh, to avoid that, but <laughs> um, but like, yeah, so because you, is that because you wouldn't want to personify it? Uh, part, part, partially, yes. Uh, I don't know. I just think the word God is, comes with so much baggage, I suppose, and I suppose it can open up some perhaps some interpretation that I would not agree with. Yeah. So, if it started being associated with that word. So, but as far as the shared reality, I want to address that yeah. a little bit. Yes, yeah, so I, I addressed that uh, in my uh, in my opening. So, our shared reality in my in my model in my framework or in the proposed framework uh, is explained in a similar way that uh, it is explained in in a kind of physical realist model. It's just that what is that's outside of, of our current, uh, of our personal consciousness that we come, that we, that we all perceive, that we all experience, uh, uh, that we, that we, yeah, that we all experience uh, commonly uh, is, a, is a reality, is an exterior reality of purely mental stuff not mind external stuff. Uh, so it is mental states in transpersonal mind uh, that impinges on the dissociated, all, the dissociated boundaries of the respective alters in terms of which each of them experience and apprehend uh, that mental outside exterior reality. That's the claim. I'm guessing Alyosha would want to ask is there anything about the nature of reality itself that supports this view? Is that what you want to ask, Alyosha? Sure, yeah. Well, because that's the pragmatic claim, right? In terms of explanatory power, like if we, you know, like um, materialists assert, you know, like have basic fundamental assumptions, like we live in a shared reality, that um, works that's that's consistent whether I believe in it or whether you believe in it and and that's how science works it's because we can do peer review and we can refine together over time because things do work in a consistent way that's how we're able to develop technology and all this stuff so it does seem like just the fact that that science works shows that reality works in a particular kind of way. Now, you can say that that's happening within mind, which I guess is what Alyosha is, is saying, that it's like you can use all the explanatory power you want, and he'll just say it's happening within mind. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I'm asking is, like, is there anything about the nature of reality that would support your fundamental assertions about that you know to to like confirm like is there any kind of falsification or 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 like tests that that show okay this 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 uh bit that i can uh, uh this thing that i can point to confirms and and demonstrates that my assumptions about reality are true 
Well, I'm not sure that there would be any scientific tests that would do that. Um, Obviously. Uh, but I'm not sure that, I'm not sure how that would be relevant uh, since what's put forward is an ontology. Well, because if you're going to make an assertion, you have to back it up with evidence or at least be, be questioned. Like, like if I, cause I've seen like these, these Christians and, and some of them are like, I have a mathematical proof of God. It's like, sure. Just cause you can make a, a case that looks consistent on a piece of paper and it's like really nice and self consistent. How do we know it's not a house of cards? If you can't test it or prove it or, or demonstrate it in any kind of way that you can point to. Like, I'm also curious, like, and I guess this, this goes back to Alyosha's other question about practicality, right? Like if, if ultimately what you're talking about is the same exact reality that Alyosha is talking about, but instead of just thinking, oh, it's just the universe in flux, you say, the universe is in flux is just happening in mind, and mind is just like this, a uh, way of talking about reality as it is, and maybe you don't even postulate anything outside of that. It's just the container of reality is all in mind. Like, what's the practical difference? Um, it, is there one? Was, was that to me? Yeah. Oh, um, um, is there a practical difference? Like, I mean, like, do you and, and Alyosha, would you agree about how everything in reality kind of works, but at the end of the day, you're just going to say, oh, it's all happening in, in mind. The universe is just mine. And Alyosha is going to be like, well, it seems like the universe is just, is just stuff. And I wouldn't say that there's, there's this mind element, but you and him basically agree about exactly everything about how reality works, what's possible, what's not possible. But the only difference is, is that you're saying it happens in mind. Basically. Is that to me or to... Yeah, bas I mean, basically? Yeah, that's the basic difference. Uh, of course, there, there are nuances to the position. That but I mean, there's nothing that would show up in reality differently between your view and his view. That you could that you could point to and be like, this is the difference in our in our view of reality. Well, maybe there are. I'd uh, have to look into uh, the science as it relates to this a little bit more to to give a to give a, a good answer to that. But but as of yet, I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Like, do you think that there are like um, like people have like psychic connections or that you can or that like like you give the analogy of a dream do you think like reality is malleable like a dream is i don't know <laughs> okay see so okay okay well you guys want to do like some wrap-up stuff like i can give you both I guess I have some questions to Alyosha, actually. Excellent, excellent. I don't want to rush you off, so yeah, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I'm still, I don't. I still think I'm. I'm not quite understanding the pragmatic point. Like, what is it? I don't. I don't understand. Like, are you? Are you basically saying, like, what is the point of it all? Uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't serve some some pragmatic utility. Is, is that basically it? Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah, because I don't see, I mean, besides stating the obvious, I don't see any practical applications, uh, only an interesting view that I happen to agree it's true, but beyond that, it's either a speculation, so in terms of global mind. Um, yeah, so for me, it's kind of, is a question of let's guess about some implications that this ontological primitive that uh, Bernardo is talking about has. But I, I mean, for me, it's almost more like a 
claim about maybe absolute reality versus relative, but when you, I would agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I don't see any pragmatic reasons in terms of trying to explain the world as we know it. Yeah. Okay. So just to be clear, you don't think there's something untenable about the ontology of idealism in virtue of it uh, perhaps not serving uh, some some pra pragmatic utility. I mean, I have yet, um, I mean, nothing you mentioned, maybe you can give me another example, maybe I didn't understand anything, but I, I like I said, I agree, but nothing you said really blew my mind in terms of if we view reality in such a way that I would say, oh my God, this totally like changes everything, right? No matter how you massage this ideological approach, at the end of the day, we are still forced to use emergency's point of view in order to have the best tools to understand reality. This is sort of my point, because I well, have yet to hear anything you're saying. Well, Yosha, you're kind of an agnostic, right? That's what you're saying. And he's making, Yeah, I'm agnostic, yeah. And he's course. making this extra claim, and you're saying, okay, you're making this extra claim, and yeah, it may be parsimonious, but you don't have any evidence to back it up, and it doesn't bring any value to the table in terms of changing our view of reality. So Yeah, but I want to kind of circumvent, because this kind of circumvents the problem of evidence, right? Because there's no exterior evidence to point to, right? It's objectively true to say that everything is in TWE. And no matter how much you massage material world, that's not going to circumvent the point that it's happening in TWE, right? So and, this is why you... I'm arguing he's kind of changing the epistemology because there's no exterior epistemological research you can do because it's beside the point. And as an agnostic, though, would you say it's untenable to make this extra leap or this extra claim, especially um, if you can't back it up with evidence? Is that your position? I mean, I like I said, I agree that everything's happening in TWE. This is a fact. So I agree with that. What is intenable, in my opinion, is... Why, I mean, there are two things that I feel are intenable in, in this view. First, what happens after death? And second, why is this TWE, um, why is the mind field or whatever he wants to massage it common? Why don't we, why doesn't every individual has, why, why do we even have a common mind field? Why is the TWE common to us? Like, why can we see or hear ourselves? Why don't we just all live in, why, why, aren't they, why isn't every local mind in its own kind of universe, right? These are kind of the two things I would have a problem in terms of his, uh in terms of this ontology he's proposing right but other than other than that i don't know that that's pretty much it yeah i hope i was clear enough rasmus do you have any other questions or yeah a few actually i'm, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts uh there's two other questions actually popped up because you were saying you were, i think you were making a, a few points there uh, you know, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand where the disagreement is exactly, I suppose. Um, because it seems like there is some. I mean, so, there, is, there is no, there is no, I mean, the only, the only two points where I would see disagreement, I mean, disagreement, there is no disagreement in terms of, it's true to say everything is happening to WE. The only thing, I mean, it's it just this disagreement will only be, and that's not even disagreement. It's just an observation. There's there's no pragmatic value viewing. I mean, there's nothing we can gain from understanding reality from such a view. So it's 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 true to say it's happening in the DWE, but it kind of ends there because we don't know what happens after that. Um, well, we don't and, know what TWE actually is, and so he's making a further step or a further assumption about what it is. No, that but he, that he no, can't back up, right? No, but no, he no, he can back up. He can say that you don't know, you not knowing what TWE is is happening in TWE. So what? That doesn't mean that he knows what it is. Like he's making a claim that he knows what it is. 
no, I mean, he, he's, he's claiming that not just not just that you're no, having this is an how experience, experience though. he's yeah, claiming that it's a global experience. He's he's making that extra. No, he's step. agnostic about that. He's agnostic about that. No, I'm not agnostic. No, about he's not agnostic okay, about. Go that. for it. Explain then. Okay, he's I'm making, not agnostic about uh, universal consciousness and transpersonal orientation. I, I was just agnostic about the the death thing. About how to how to view uh, what happens after death to our consciousness. Yeah, but I still don't. Okay, but this field of mind. So then this goes back to the, my problem of global versus local. Why do we have? Why do we live in a common reality? Why is why why is there a common reality? Why is it possible that we, like us three in this case, are even capable of communicating? Why does why doesn't every TWE just live in its own universe? I I I feel like you haven't really addressed that question. I mean, or I didn't understand. And if you're just gonna go, well, you know, it's all like a super mind. Again, this is just a speculation. But the, even if you say that, you still don't know why. Why isn't there like a super mind for each every individual, right? So, the, so my question would be, why are we even in a common reality? Why isn't there? Uh, 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 why doesn't everybody live in their own reality? Yeah, we we can get to that. I'm still. But I'm still might not be satisfied with what I was what I was asking. Okay, you can you can rephrase the question. And I'll try yeah. to answer again. Um, yeah. So it it seems like a point of disagreement might be that you seem to maybe be agnostic, but with respect to my claim that there is. There is this transpersonal mentation, mind at large, and universal consciousness. Yes, uh, I'm agnostic about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not. So that's perhaps uh, a central point of disagreement. That's perhaps a central point of disagreement that yeah. maybe needs to be hashed out. I think he thinks that you're you're taking a step too far there, and that you don't have the the evidence to back it up, especially since you can't point to things in reality to support the view. He's okay. talking about it in a in a pra, in a pragmatic way, but I think in terms of you know, I think that's that's his perspective as an agnostic. I right? mean, it's they you don't, don't make claims beyond your ability to know. If you can't have reasons to say that you know things or logical conclusions that that lead you to this perspective, then it's it's a step beyond. Is that right, Alyosha? Yeah, well, I mean, the problem is if he throws out the emergentist perspective then all he has is TWE and everything and we can't we can we can't ever prove what's beyond TWE if there's a universal mind and so on. Now I'm not saying he, maybe there is, right? Maybe before we were all born there was like this universal TWE. Obviously, yeah, maybe there is. is. The no, question uh, yeah, is how so do we not, know, right? Yeah, and once we start to ask this question, we have no choice but go back to emergentism. So this is why I feel like this is more of a battle of epistemology rather than... Because he, his view is basically taking away the whole materialistic epistemology as relevant as he's pointing out that everything is happening in TWE. So, so Rasmus, what would you say you're... I mean, I, mean, I don't... I'll, forgive me if I'm jumping in, but what would you say your relationship to science is? Um, could you elaborate on what you mean by relationship to science? I mean, like, do you feel that you have to have, um, like good reasons and for to, to like hold your ideas? Do you test your ideas to see if they stand up with evidence? Do you try to falsify ideas? Um, even like, um, yeah, even logically, if it's not something that necessarily you feel like can be can be tested, like empirically, like science in a broad sense, like um, what what do you think about what Alyosha is saying about? Um, it seems like Alyosha has this idea that like you'll kind of agree with with a lot of science, but you'll just frame it as just happening in uh, in consciousness. 
But do you um, feel like your claims about, about the nature of reality and consciousness also have to be in accord with science? Yes, I think so. They okay. have to be in accord with science. Right. Um, okay, so going back to my, my question to Alyosha, uh, I'm trying to think how to phrase my question. So I guess what what would be your I'm, not, I'm still not I'm still not clear on what your objection would be uh, with regards to my claim uh, that there is transpersonal mind beyond our personal minds. Like I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, I what haven't. You get that is. I haven't heard any sufficient. I mean. Maybe there's a there's a difference of under maybe I didn't quite understand your argument, but basically I didn't hear any convincing at least for me and maybe you can re uh, explain again. But I didn't hear any convincing argument as to how do you know that there is uh, this universal mind because my argument is just simple. If everything's happening TWE, why doesn't anybody? Why why don't we all live in our own matrix matrix? Why why is there a common world? This is my question. Now, obviously, you can of course say it's all happening in one global mind, right? But I mean, this is again you're making an absolute claim that nobody I feel can back up. Whatever you're gonna say, obviously, you're not gonna throw materialism in the or emergentism in because that's irrelevant. But I, I, I don't see how you can go beyond the fact that it's true to say everything is happening in TWE. But anything beyond that, how is this to say, well, and TWE is this global mind or whatever, then you need to explain the difference between life and death, in my opinion. Because I would assume this is where one would pass from local TWE to the global one. So being dead, in if I understand your your explanation, is that once you kind of disassociate, you become you go back with the global mind, and I don't see sufficient evidence except baseless speculation that that is true. Well, he doesn't even if, correct me if I'm wrong, Rasmus, but you don't even necessarily. You said you're agnostic about whether you just as a separate sort of archetype <laughs> dissolve or whatever versus whether you maintain your individuality. You said you're not sure or whether you, so would you say that it's like that, that you dissolve back into the source or something like that? You're uh, not I sure. Would, I would not say that. No, I'm, I'm not sure because to me, it seems like to say that it, that it continues in some, uh, they continue by by dissolving into some meta mind or universal consciousness. It seems to presuppose a continuance of of a separately existing entity or separate self that has continuance over time. Do you think that consciousness on this global scale um, exists outside of reality as we know it, or is it reality as we know it? It is reality as we know it. Is there an is there an outside or is this it? Uh, when you say reality as we know it, are you talking about like the physical universe? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. My claim is that transpersonal mind is, in some sense, outside of the external universe, uh, but it corresponds to the external universe as a whole its mental states corresponds to it. It is the, the external universe is the phenomenal representation of mind at large. Just like in the physical realist view, our, our perceptions of the external universe is a phenomenal representation of, mind external, of a mind external reality. In my view, it is a phenomenal representation of transpersonal mental states in mind at large. So is, is mind at large something like a, like a brain in a vat somewhere? 
Mm. Or is there no, or is, is there an outside like that in which this mind at large exists? Is there or, an outside? In or, is mind is, or is mind at large just the universe? The universe as a phenomenal representation is, is, a, is corresponding to the transpersonal mental states in mind at large. That's my claim. And uh, universal consciousness is the ontological primitive. Mind at large being the... Uh, the part of universal consciousness that is not a dissociated altar. Does mind at large need dissociated altars, as you say, to experience things? You mean, does universal, universal consciousness need, need that? Yeah, is it like, yeah, is universal consciousness just this kind of like floaty, floaty stuff in, in like a transpersonal realm that needs like, like, like a radio signal that needs um what did you call them some kind of dis dissociated alters or something to um exist through how does that uh, work no uh, i don't think so it does not need dissociated alters to exist through no okay uh so i think we got a little bit sidetracked there from what i was trying to uh get from yeah. alyosha I'm sorry, I'm just really curious about this view. Yeah. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, so would your kind of objection then be a scientific one that I, that I perhaps cannot justify uh, my claim of transpersonal mental states and mind at large scientifically? Would that be your objection, Alyosha? No. No. Not necessarily, no. And I'm not, I mean, I'm if you're referring uh, scientifically in terms of looking at emergentism, no, because obviously science does science won't prove anything since everything is happening. Everything is a representation in consciousness. I'm just saying that. Um, I mean, again, th th this is the problem where I feel. If we don't know, I'm just trying to picture. Because uh, we're basically, we can go to infinite regress because I can e just say, well, what's beyond the global mind, right? So, so let's is it, say... Is it not because of the fact that it's, you can't prove it with science, it's because you're making claims about things that can't be proven, period? I'm, I'm just arguing that it's, it's impossible to prove or disprove his claim and beyond that, so basically, my uh, what I would say is, it's impossible to prove or disprove his claim. And in terms of trying to understand the world the best we can, all we have, even if we agree on the fact that everything is a DWE, all we have is pragmatic emergentist view in terms of understanding things in DWE that happen. Um, and beyond that, even though it's true that everything's happening in TW, everything beyond that, what happens after you die or if there is a global mind, I think this is just a speculation. Because I, I assume that we were all global mind and then we were in born in however that happened. Or, I mean, consciousness, things just started to appear in consciousness. So from global mind, we went to a local mind. Um, I mean, he, it it's it's possible, but he would need to explain, and I don't see how that's possible to do. How one goes from global mind to local, and I assume then back to 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 global after he's dead. That's sort of my um question here. But that that but even in this question, I already kind of presuppose still kind of emergent emergent emergentist properties, but in 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 reverse, in kind of subjective way. Uh, but I assume you're saying that you're going from when we were born, right? So at what point did we become? Because 
you, at what point do we become con- conscious TWE, right? When when we, when you make a baby, at what point does that representation come alive and the baby starts to see TWE? That's my question. Because I don't see how you can answer that question. Yeah, so, so I'm still trying to understand like what is the what is kind of uh, stopping you from leaving your agnosticism to uh, uh, going over to to my position? Is it those concerns that you just uh, phrased as questions? I mean, the, the problem is, yeah, what's stopping me is the fact that I don't think we can know the answer to this question. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it's not possible, but I would say it's probably at least irrelevant, just like it's irrelevant how it is when we are asleep, right? Nobody knows that they're alive at that moment. Um, so if we kind of, let's say, and maybe I can ask you, what's the difference between before being born versus being in a deep sleep state? What's, what's there? I mean, I don't see how you can, how you can differentiate these states of mind. Um, because I, I don't see how you know that there is a global mind. And that this is what's stopping me. And that's why I'm agnostic. Because I, I, I didn't hear you have a sufficient explanation. And I don't see how you, could, how you could have a sufficient explanation. So that is what is stopping me. Yeah. So are you yeah. saying, Alyosha, that if you want to be more than agnostic, you have to have good reasons and evidence or some kind of sufficient explanation? Yeah, but I... But from where he's coming from, it's impossible to get that from emergentism. So, but, so, so all he has is basically speculation. Right. And so I'm that's not your satisfied problem. with his speculation. That's my so, problem. Yeah. So speculation beyond what you can say that you know yeah. is, is a problem. Although I'm not denying it could be true. Of course. But I'm but, just saying it's not you, probably all that useful. You're saying speculation is. isn't tenable, especially when it brings nothing to the table. This is your position, yes? This is my position from the very beginning when you started talking, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So was I clear enough, Erasmus? Or? I think it's definitely progress, but I'm trying to... Uh, I want to be able to kind of... You can, the, basically, I'm trying to say you can't, I can't, you can't falsify, I can't falsify your presupposition, but you can't prove your presupposition to me either. I can agree with you to the extent when we are alive, but what's beyond us being alive or before we were born, this is where I would stop because I don't know what happens to us in before world or after world. We so just it, know, yeah. it is your position. That you, that you don't. That's think, why I'm agnostic. You don't think it's good to claim things beyond your ability to know, and if you're going to claim it, you have to be able to to prove it. And when you ask him things like, "When did consciousness get in?" or "What happens before you're born?" your point there is that he doesn't know. He's got no good answers for this, and so who who cares? Is that your point? Yeah, this is my point. Yeah. So like and you, that's why I'm agnostic. To like at the end of the day, you still only have the science that we have. You still only have the answers that we have. So it's just pure speculation and it brings nothing to the table. This is your yeah. position. Yes? Yeah. So that's why I would consider myself from this point, like idealistic pragmatist, idealistic. In, um, and let, let's not get, get me wrong. Idealistic in, in terms of that. I agree with Rasmus that everything is in TWE but pragmatist in terms of how we understand reality because using TWE beyond our experience is just a speculation. And I haven't heard a sufficient argument and I don't know how Rasmus would get to that argument and that's why I'm agnostic. I agree with him in this life, but I agree before life or after life or global mind, I, I'm agnostic about all those other things. If you're interested, Al- you guys, I could tell you where I part ways with Alyosha. For the record, sure. if you want to know. I like, I am a hard agnostic about the absolute truth of reality. Like, it could be all in mind, like, you know, like, like you're saying. And I, I agree with him about that. But I think the fact that uh, emergentism is true is an objective fact. And, like... 
it's different to say that consciousness arose. I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, like it could be, or at least, at least in terms of, of our relative reality, I would say that that is like a, a fact, like evolution is a fact. You could subsume it, you know, under the, the banner of uh, idealism, uh, possibly. It could be all in a simulation or something like this. But I think no, but it's but it's actually even more objectively true to say that evolution is happening in TWE. <laughs> no, but it really is. So I understand his position. It's actually more objectively true to say that what you experience is happening in consciousness and its content. In terms of epistemology, but not in terms of ontology or cosmology. Like, I think that what we know based on our experience of reality helps us to understand better what consciousness actually is. Like, because that's, that's yeah, but the, that's switch, that's yeah, the but claim. You're switching, yeah, but you're switching the primacy again. Because the, whatever you're going to know about materialistic world, there's no escaping the fact that all is happening in TWE. Right. This but you have to know Rasmus's what... Point. But but neither one of us know what TWE is. And so like, that's the project is, is trying to figure out what consciousness actually is. Just having the pure experience of consciousness doesn't tell you what consciousness is to try to figure out what consciousness is. You have to, like you said, figure out how it emerges. And then, yeah, but yeah, but that would still be a representation of consciousness. That wouldn't necessarily give you an answer of what consciousness is. I assume that was, that's something Erasmus would say. It's just my speculation. Well, at the end of the day, we both have to come up with a with a reasonable argument for what idealism actually is. And I'm just gonna, and I just I'm, my point is that. I think emergentism has, and a realist cosmology has more explanatory power than idealism. And we could, you know, we could make those arguments, but we'd have to really explore the logic to, 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 to set up these positions and everybody would have to put their cards on the table and it'd be, yeah, it'd be like this whole thing, you know. But, you, but Alyosha is coming from a perspective that's more like, um, even more agnostic uh, than me, it seems, because Alyosha uh, isn't necessarily even going to be sure enough to say that it's a realist material reality. Is that right, Alyosha? Um, I think that I agree with you in terms of that the best, pro if I had to sp speculate what would be the best way or where is maybe key to understanding consciousness, it would probably be in such a world. But I would then, again, assume that whatever we find, let's say there's some quantum thing, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. That quantum thing is still in consciousness and there's like, it's a never-ending loop in a way. So, I mean, is, is, is it even tangible at this point? And we know that quantum physics is also spooky. So, um, Well, we might have to debate this later in a, in a role review. Maybe that, um, the one with Sam Harris's wife. Yeah, I just... But um, that's interesting, I think, to, to explore the differences between our perspectives as well. So. Consciousness is, uh, is, is it's, it's quite a mystery. Um, I'm sorry and, if, uh, yeah. if as the moderator and host, I've butted in too much. I've just wanted to try to help bridge the gaps and keep the conversation. But do you, do you agree with my points, Rasmus? Um, but is, is your basic point that uh, my step beyond agnosticism is Ill illegitimate uh, in virtue of the absence of of scientific substantiation, a reason for for inferring it, or something more than scientific. Um, well, can you can you repeat the question? I didn't quite yeah. understand. So, you remaining an agnostic? Yes. Uh, is that uh, because you're uh, you're, reje you're you're rejecting the scientific? 
No, as opposed not, as opposed to what? No, I'm not rejecting scientific because again, this is switching the epistemology. There's no. I I think science doesn't even come into play in based on how I understand your argument. I'm just saying that there's no way for us. Again, th this is the problem of, of dim dimensions, right? So we are in this space-time dimension, or space-time dimension is in TWE, but I still don't know what happens before or after one dies or what is beyond TWE. Now, you're saying is a global mind, but again, this is where I kind of uh, throw my paw in and say I, I'm not sure about that. That would be my argument. I hope I is sufficiently answered. Um, so I hope I uh, I answered enough. I'm sorry. Could you could you repeat it? Repeat it again. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying I'm not disagreeing based on scientific basis because I feel that based on how you're saying, scientific basis is irrelevant, right? The question is. I just don't, I agree that everything happens in TWE, as I said, but I don't know what happens before or after you die with TWE. Now, it's totally possible that we all, that local TWE disassociates back to the global one. I'm just saying you or I or anybody don't have enough and evidence saying, and it's even impossible to get evidence obviously to go to any higher conclusion than to agree that TWE happens here and now in terms of local but anything beyond that for me there's no scientific nor idealistic claim that would make me believe in any other way because so I agree with science you scientific and Science doesn't can't measure it, right? It's yeah, exactly. because so it's like to say a scientific reason, but there's not another way to measure it either, right? So, is there is there Rasmus beyond a scientific way to know? Is there another way to know? Yeah, I think science isn't really relevant here because uh, I don't think we can know scientifically whether there's a mind external reality from which mind emerges or if there's a transpersonal mind that uh, dissociates into our experience. Uh, so I think we're going to have to use some other criteria. And those are the, the ones that I've mentioned. That's well, my art. Can you say more about what that looks like? Like, like how you know, if not scientifically? Sorry, I didn't quite get the question. Well, you said, okay, we can't know scientifically because science can't measure that. So it's like, well, how could we know? Like, what other ways are you knowing? Are you are you getting to this conclusion? I, I still don't, I'm not really firm on how you're saying that you know. Yeah, I'm saying that we that we can legitimately infer it, not know it, but that we can legitimately infer it uh, based off of it explaining our our common experience and some other you know, observations of our of how we experience reality. It may, uh, to infer something outside of our our, our uh, personal consciousnesses is necessary in order to make sense of those things and to explain those things. But my claim is just that again, to infer mental stuff outside of our personal consciousness is uh, is better than inferring uh, some something outside mind. Okay. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily explain anything, right? You're just saying it's that's a better way, but again, this this is not answering whether global mind exists. Well, right. and also isn't doesn't aren't you like seeming to like find the things in reality that you're saying that explain it like that you're just ref like it, it could be said at very least that you're just reframing those things in a way that work in terms of your narrative and you're um, disregarding things that don't fit inside your narrative neatly like the idea that if you damage a brain that parts of consciousness are, are lost like so how does how does that work 
yeah, maybe we should get to that. Then. Uh, so, so my claim regarding that, and the more general claim reg regarding uh, changes in 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 the body brain system affecting mental states. Um, my explanation for that under my framework or under the proposed framework is that uh, uh, the change in the body brain system as a phenomenal representation of, uh, of mental states in the dissociated alter uh, impinges on the dissociated boundary affecting the states of mind at large, which will in turn affect, affect the mental states of the alter. So that's the explanation under the framework. I don't understand. Maybe you can explain it uh, to me again. Is this, it, and let me, and what would you say to somebody who said that you're just reframing things under, in a new way of thinking about it without any um, solid foundation to say that, that that's, the, the truth of the matter or way of testing whether it is or isn't? Yeah, I think we can't test either way. So I don't think testing is relevant. So is it just a, which, is it just like a matter of which narrative you like and then you think that they're, neither one of them are, are more, more well-founded or more supportive than another? No, it's about which one is more supportive, but it's not a matter of which one necessarily, which one is more founded scientifically. Uh, it, but the parsimony in the epistemic point is what in my view seals the deal in framing it in terms of a mind only view of reality rather than uh, a physical realist uh, invoking physical realism into this. And that's just because it's got less steps. Uh, that and the, and the epistemic point, because I think there's more than the steps or what I say is, is parsimony. I think there's more, more to parsimony there, because I can say it's epistemically more reliable to, to explain things in terms of what we know, rather than in terms of, of uh, what we don't know, that being a reality outside consciousness. But, but, I think that's a little bit different than parsimony. Isn't that kind of like... A, like starting from within the assumption that your worldview is true and then saying, oh, we don't know that there's anything outside of consciousness, but we all experience a world outside of our consciousness. And, and it seems like you're just, you're starting from a position where you're assuming that that world is just in your consciousness and, that, and you're not even considering the possibility that it might not be, and then weighing the two views against each other. It just seems like you're saying, oh, well, it's, it's an extra step, so, um, and then you just frame, reframe it in terms of your narrative. And then, and then it's, it almost becomes like a form of begging the question or circular reasoning or something like this. So what is the question that is being begged? Well, I mean, you have this unstated assumption that the nature of reality is happening in this larger mind. And so then you reframe um, the reality that we all experience as, um, un as unknowable when it is clearly a factor. And like, so like basically you're starting from an assumption about what consciousness is and about what reality is. And then you frame everything in terms of that narrative. And then when someone says, well, we can't really know that, that uh, this is true, and when we look at these these factors, this makes sense in terms of explanatory power. Then you just go, no, in my narrative, um, matter isn't real, and so that stuff doesn't count. So it just almost feels like a language game that you're playing, as opposed to um, having a, an open consideration of all the possibilities and then weighing them against each other. No, I think the epistemic foundation does not make such assumption, assumptions. I think the epistemic foundation is is a uh, is an agnostic one. We build up from there. We're just saying that we don't know anything outside of our our our, our own consciousnesses. So, so how do you? But then, how do you get from there to this idea of meta mind? I mean, if you just stopped there, 
and said, we can't know anything outside of our consciousness. As soon as you say that I know that we exist in a shared reality and I, and I know that other people are conscious too, now you're in the field of having to figure out what consciousness is and, and how we can know. And you're going to have to do that through like navigating reality and using logic to come to conclusions and testing those, those assumptions. You don't just get to, um, build a, like, like, for example, can you imagine the possibility of like, um, someone like building a, a, a model of reality, let's say, right? Like I want to build a, a reality that's a, like a, a simulation of a model of reality in my computer. If I come up with a, with a model of reality in my computer that works within itself, that's self-consistent, does that mean that it's, a, that it's actually a model of reality? Like just because you've created a narrative that seems to work within itself, like there's still the question of, okay, but can you correlate that map to reality in some kind of way where you can test it and prove it? And what it seems like your way of getting out of that is, is to be like, well, it's all, it's all happening in mind. And so, uh, and so we can't really prove it, but we're not making any extra steps, but it's like, you're sort of, you're sort of starting from an assumption about what re what reality is actually in the first place. Um, just because you can only experience your consciousness. But that doesn't mean that we know what our consciousness is or that we know what reality is. If we're going to interpret it, we still need to use logic, right? Sure. I think I am, but, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I followed all of that. Honestly. <laughs> I'm just saying, how do you know that this narrative that you frame things in actually maps to how reality is? Um, because it's, it, it's basically the parsimony point and the epistemic point. It's, it's. So, the, the, so if you create a map that's self-consistent, then that means the map is, is, is like a map of reality. If it's self-consistent and parsimonious and epistemologically more reliable, and then all else held constant, then yes. How, how could we know if it's epistemologically more reliable? Because we do not know what is outside of our personal consciousnesses. And insofar as there is something outside of our personal consciousnesses, there, it is more epistemologically reliable to infer that thing that is outside of our personal consciousnesses to be of the same ontological uh, nature as, as uh, our own our own personal consciousnesses, and that is just more consciousness, or more mental stuff, more mental is going, more mental yeah, but is going. How are you? How are you getting there, though? Like, couldn't you just do that ad infinitum, right? And then it's like, well, it makes sense then to think that this meta consciousness is happening in another meta conscious, because I mean, I mean, again, it's just a, a step outwards. If you stopped at solipsism and you said, well, all we can know is consciousness then that would make sense to me. But, when you, but, but, but then when you make this extra step out, postulating that we're all in this shared consciousness, and then you don't try to even map that to reality, it seems like a step too far. Now you're just making, like, like uh, Alyosha is saying, like speculative assumptions and, and saying that it's justified because we know that consciousness exists. But we also know that the reality that we like the shared reality that we exist in and exists too. I mean, we, we don't know what it is, which is your point, but we also don't know what consciousness is, which is my point. So you can't start from, from, from thinking that either one is predetermined. You have to use logic to come to conclusions to show which map, actually has better explanatory power in terms of the evidence about reality. Yeah. Um, this is, I think... What way am I not using logic? Well, because you don't... Do you have a way that, like, tests or, like, um, 
it gets you from this idea of consciousness as your own consciousness to this larger um, claim that you're making about the nature of reality. Like how, what, what's the logical steps to get you from consciousness, from, from personal consciousness to global consciousness? Well, it's because what is the alternative, right? The alternative is to infer something less parsimonious, something less epistem epistemically reliable. How, I don't understand when you say that it's less epistemically reliable. Can you, can you say more about that? Yeah. If we're infer inferring something outside of our personal consciousnesses, um, given two options between that thing being of a fundamentally different ontological min uh, nature than mind, and the other option being that just being of a of the same ontological nature, namely mind. That latter alternative is epistemically more reliable because we know mind exists as the only carrier of reality we can ever know for sure. So. It yeah, is, but it, that leads you to solipsism. It, it, that doesn't lead you to idealism. How does that lead, how does that lead us to solipsism? Because if you want, if you want to say that that this meta mind exists you don't know that the meta mind exists you only know that your consciousness exists and it exists in a context sorry could you repeat that you don't know that the meta mind exists you only know that your consciousness exists so you don't get to say oh well consciousness exists therefore i know meta mind exists that's a leap no because it's it's uh because I'm merely inferring an ontological, I'm, I'm merely extrapolating an ontological category uh, that I already know to exist, uh, while uh, physical realism, the physical realism of emergentism, is postulating some, something uh, that they don't know with equal amount of epistemological confidence. But with solipsism, the, we're just stopping like at our first assumption but I don't, I don't I think we can make more than that or am I perhaps not understanding your argument well maybe this is where Alyosha's point about like we don't know what reality is but we know reality is real right we know that we exist in this shared context and this is where I was saying that we don't know what that context is but we also don't know what consciousness is. So to say that we only know consciousness, if you want to say that you know more, if you, if you want to say that we exist in a shared reality and that other beings exist too, then it seems like you have to be agnostic about what they both are. And you can't just assume that one is primary and you can't say that, you, that we only know our consciousness if you're going to say that these other aspects of reality exists because we know that they're factors too. So you have to understand these factors in relation to each other. So it's, it's not like an extra step to postulate reality. It's like now we have, I mean, and regardless of how many steps, what matters is how, how founded those steps are. I mean, so it seems it's, that, it's, uh, that it's not an epistemically less reliable. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I'm understanding your objection to that. Well, I think the part of the problem is that um, when we do integral epistemology, we have integral methodological pluralism, right? So we take into account different ways of measuring data from all different quadrants, and we try to do some kind of cross-quadrant cross analysis with explanatory power where we try to figure out what might be the case by taking into account all the data. Sure. Yeah, but he's, he's just gonna say that uh, the whole the whole thing is happening in TWE. That's what I'm saying. So like- You can't, you can't, you can't we have, recommend this problem. We have a rigorous methodology to come to our conclusions and you're just making an assertion. I think I'm making a little bit more 
just an assertion. Okay, so what's the evidence that your view is true? There is no scientific evidence. My claim well, what, is what evidence do you have then? I have an argument. The argument is all else held constant. The parsimony uh, thing and the epistemic thing. What's uh, the difference between the parsimony thing and the epistemic thing? So the epistemic thing is the the steps. Yeah, I think it's absolutely. less steps. So what's the parsimony the steps, thing? The steps are different than merely claiming, uh, than merely inferring things based on what we know, right? Uh, so the the steps don't don't concern. Uh, but you're framing you're framing what we know by pre-assuming your your worldview because you're not giving you're not acknowledging the fact that we live in a shared reality and we know that that's a factor too you're no, saying not, no 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 i'm not assuming another worldview or my own worldview rather uh in any worldview we know consciousness uh we know that consciousness exists it's, it's and it's primary yeah, it's in terms of epistemologically any, primary, yeah. Yeah, in any ontology. Sure. I'm just, so yeah. that's why I'm saying it's but, but if you go beyond solipsism and you want to say that other minds exist and that we exist in a shared reality, if you're, if you're willing to admit that those are factors, then it seems like you have to try to explain all of these factors in relation to each other. You can't just say that the other ones don't exist, right? Uh, the other ones don't exist? Yeah, like other people's consciousness and the world that we live in. So it's not to say, oh, we don't know those things, because we do know those things. What we have to figure out is what their relationship to each other is. I feel like you're kind of pre-assuming your worldview when you say we don't know those things. It's like you're, you're pre-assuming that, that the world is just happening in mind. If you want to say that those things are part of our experience, and that we don't know what's going on with them, and we don't know what's going on with consciousness. Let's see. Let's see if we can find out from a purely agnostic perspective. Then you have to see which worldview has better evidence to support it. And it feels like you're just taking yours as a given when you when you start from this position, like, well, we can only know this. It's like, well, that's that's you pre-assuming we can only. Yeah, I think I've made it clear how I'm not doing that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm starting to get a little bit uh, tired, honestly. So yeah, I, I feel like this is probably yeah. getting close to the end. Do you guys want to? I wanted to just finish off like a few, sure. clarifying a few things, or just perhaps just one thing regarding the the shared reality. My claim is that what explains our 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 experience of having a shared reality that we like we can we can all agree if we're in the same room we can all agree that there's furniture in, in certain places and so on uh, my solution for that is that yes there is an external reality that we perceive but that external reality is just just mental purely mental that's basically basically the claim and we can experience it because that transpersonal mind impinges on the respective associated boundaries uh, such that an appearance uh, oh, uh, such, such that there is an appearance in terms of which all the respective al alters uh, can agree upon what is what is the shared reality that was my explanation for that well let's do let's do closing statements and um let's see uh i guess who wants to go first on that who do you actually maybe um rasmus you should go first and then since you opened up and then we'll give alyosha the final word unless you want to flip it around however you guys want to do it okay <laughs> The, the the overly loose moderator. I'm sorry. My first time moderating. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, shall I start? Sure, go ahead. Sure, yeah. 
Yeah, so I conclude this debate um, by saying that I did not uh, perceive a reasonable objection to my main argument, the parsimony argument. I think it still stands that all else held constant because my ontology is favored by uh, epistemic reliability and parsimony uh, that my theory or view, regardless of its theoretical speculation, still is better theoretical speculation relative to an emergentist one, emergentist uh, theory. Uh, and the, pra the practical, the pragmatics point regarding that one, uh, let's see how what I think about that. Um, I'm not making any claims uh, regarding its, its utility as of yet, scientific or otherwise, in terms of, in terms of what it can aid in our understanding. Um, and while that's an interesting question, I think that is uh, an, a meta discussion, an interesting meta discussion, but an, but an interesting, but a meta discussion nonetheless. And uh, the main point that I was primarily concerned with defending in this debate, I regard as still standing uh, in virtue of my argument. And with that said, I think there is still interesting territory to, to explore regarding the, uh, the, practic the pra pragmatic stuff. Uh, and I look forward to, to continuing to explore that. And I also can look forward to continue to explore uh, how my ontology stands up with what is perhaps the, the scientific testing objection as well. Great. Alyosha? Great. Um, well, I think I just kind of said that the debate is gonna down, go down to exactly what I was har harping at the beginning that I cannot counter argue his points at this moment. I I still don't agree. I don't think that this idea that everything the repre this, this representation is happening in a global mind. Obviously, it's an obvious interpretation, but I I wouldn't go that far. I think based on his epistemology, it does make sense, but it's too obvious. And even if it's true then one needs to explain where this mind is coming from and therefore we can go to infinite regress and we're not going to solve everything. Uh, we're not going to solve anything. So for me, I agree that everything is happening in TWE, but anything beyond that, that there's like a global mind and this, that TWE is a representation, whatever, I'm not convinced by that argument. And I don't find that... Um, and I still think that probably the closest way we're going to come to the truth is using emergentist approaches. Although he has a point in terms of saying that everything, everything's happening in TWE and it's an important fact, but beyond that, I don't see any usefulness in everything else he's saying what's either before or after that, or if there's like a global mind, again, he doesn't know what's after the global mind and he cannot really know if this global mind really exists. For all we know, we can be in some kind of a supercomputer. I mean, it's it's impossible to say, um, but I cannot refute his points and I agree with at least the local TWE part, but I don't agree with the global part. That's sort of my, and I still think we, at the end, will probably be forced to be materialists until maybe some further quantum or whatever, whatever findings may, make a, maybe something completely th different. Maybe there's a third way we're not aware of. Like ooh, maybe there's a four dimension, you know, we only know three dimensions, something that Neil deGrasse 
Degrassi, Degrassi Tyson asks himself. Again, I think it's more what Raz was doing is basically just making some logical speculation based on his epistemology in terms of what higher truth will be. But again, I just feel like it's a very straightforward logical interpretation, but I, I, I'm not convinced. And that's sort of my end statement here. But I, I admit that I could not refute his points and I agree with local TWE. Thank you, gentlemen. Both of you did a great job being civil and being reasonable. And I have a lot of respect for both of you for stepping out onto the public stage and having this conversation together. It is a great boon for our community. I hope that it encourages further debate and further conversations around these topics. Thanks to everybody for listening. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe all that good stuff. Support me on Patreon if that's a thing you want to do. Look in the description for ways to follow Alyosha and Rasmus. See if I can get their information. And thanks again. Peace. 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 Peace.